at the end of the day, all we want to do is we want to challenge everybody to be the best that they can be, to reach out. Because I know in my life, if I waited till I was ready to become who I became, it never would have happened. Get ready to meet a true American hero on today's Dreamers Endures podcast series. Y'all know I'm an avid hockey fan. I'm passionate about the greatest game in the world that is hockey. And today it's my honor to welcome the amazing, legendary, uh, miracle on ice goalie, Jim Craig. When you talk about the miracle, it's one of the greatest moments in USA sports history. So Jim has had tons of success, you know, obviously in terms of his hockey ability, he's gone on to do big things in the business community. He's an accomplished author. He's a motivational speaker. He's a corporate consultant, and he owns a company called uh, Gold Medal Strategies, which is all about giving strategy and winning direction to corporations around the world. And today I'm very excited to listen to him talk about, um, how people should focus on preparing to win versus preparing to compete. All right, Jim, well, welcome to the Dreamers and Doers podcast. I have to be honest with you, I'm absolutely thrilled to have you on here. I'm a huge fan of you. I'm a huge fan of you know the USA Miracle Team and one of the biggest moments in USA sports history. So thanks for being on the show. And so, Jim, if you look at the podcast title, it's all about what you're dreaming about and what you're doing. So tell us, you know, what are you dreaming about currently and what are you up to? Well, what I'm dreaming about now is taking the current business I have, which has been mostly motivational speaking and more going to leadership development, because I truly believe that what is happening is we're not as organized as leaders in developing what I call the up and coming. And so I think you really have to make an effort to develop these people and not just use their skill. And so it's, it's really about for us transitioning more to the um, preparation of building leaders and, and uh, being able to distinguish between what I call a leader and an executor. Love that. Yeah. And, you know, executors are people who are giving leadership titles that you have to get permission to lead. And all they do is execute what the leader has. And, and I really believe that what you want to do is you want to develop people. And if they go from your company someplace else and they thrive, that's great. Because as leaders, I think your biggest chore is to develop the people that are underneath you. I love that. So it's just great advice. And I have to believe someone like yourself learned a lot about that, right? During your time, you know, playing for Team USA in the Olympics. And I can't wait to talk about that. But before we go there, you know, as a member of a key member of the USA team, the Miracle team, again, biggest upset in sports history uh, for, for the United States, you know, defeating the Soviet Union and then going on to win the gold medal against the, the Finnish team. Um, I know there was a lot of great memories, right, that you had during that time frame. What stands out? Like, what's the one or two things that stand out the most about that experience for you uh, winning the gold medal? Well, you know, Craig, it comes back to even now as I'm, as I'm doing this leadership development. It's, a lot, you know, I always ask people, are you preparing to win or are you preparing to compete? And it, there are two different preparations for that. Uh, but more than anything, before you can do either one, you have to get organized, right? Yeah, for so sure. What I remember most is how incredibly organized Herb Brooks was. I mean, down to the, the second, how he did the, our 61-game schedule. Um, and, and not only was he organized, but he prepared us to win. And, and the part that was most interesting is, even though all of us had played on different teams and had, had won at every level, and knew how to win. So the thing that was e interesting is how he recruited people. And he recruited, first of all, people that could that knew how to win. And so it doesn't matter how talented you are, it, you don't know what you don't know. So until you've really gone in and, and had to battle and figure out how to win, that you know, that's interesting. But to take a mindset and change it to the, you know, 
all my teammates were the best athletes the United States had to offer, one at every level. And then you have this guy who comes in with a, a way to win, but it's nothing like you used to. So he, he has to change a whole mindset of these people. And they have to be willing to be part of something bigger than themselves and be part of something and, and commit to the unknown, right? So to me, that was the most fascinating thing is how this man got organized, recruited the, the right people, convinced them to be part of something bigger than themselves, and then put them in the right position and did it in six months. It's just that's it's amazing. Crazy. It's amazing to me. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The fact you bring people from the different backgrounds, you know, different skill sets, you know, and you put them on team and you only have a certain amount of time to actually train and work together. I love the fact that just like he was thinking about, you know, it's, it's all about the mindset, like really being, being focused on finding those people that are winners, right? And then putting a group of winners that have the same common goal together. That's, that's just awesome. Well, Craig, the other thing that's really interesting that I really focus on in leadership is winning is an ingredient. There's a different ingredient. And every year, if you have a winning culture, you know, I, I will always say to a lot of these organizations, tell me a, a, a sports team, anybody that has a winning culture. And then they'll say, well, the Montreal Canadiens. And I say, they haven't won in 20 years. A, a, a winning <laughs> culture is somebody that wins every year. Now, the Avalanche have a chance to have a winning culture. They won the Stanley Cup last year, right? And, and so it's, it's really important that um, you understand what are the ingredients that you need this year to win under the circumstances of whatever industry you're in, right? And, and that, that takes a, a lot of preparation and a lot of organization. And it has, you, you have to develop people underneath you to be able to do that. I love that. I love that. And I love the fact you called out my favorite team, the Avalanche, and fingers crossed that we can see a repeat here this year. So you talked a lot about Herb Brooks. Um, you know, you had some other amazing teammates, right? Some people that had a lot of success, you know, Mark Johnson, Jack O'Callaghan, um, Mike Arruzzioni, of course, you know, the captain of the team there. Um, I'm sure there's some other people too, Rob um, McCannahan as well like who are some give me give me an idea of like a favorite memory of these teammates you played with well i think the thing that i love best is we you know we came together with the same dream right but it had nothing to do with the olympics it had to do with be utilizing the olympics and its opportunity to develop your skill to play in the national hockey but what i saw through this period of time is a coach changed the mindset of all these guys. And then the commitment to represent our country became incredible. And how they just fell into place, all the teammates, by realizing who should be doing what without any jealousy at all. And it was because all of them knew what it took to win. And, you, you know, you could contain a great player, but you can't contain a great team. And so we were a bunch of great players who had the same goal and we had a coach that said, you can't win that way. And so we had, we had to transition our mindset to become a great team that had the same dream. Love that. that was bigger than ourselves. And as, as the season went on and our wins and our losses, I mean, I, I always tell people, you know, isn't fatal, but being afraid to it. And so what I love best about the teammates that I had in that team, Nobody was afraid. You know, they weren't afraid to, to compete. They learned from competing. They competed with each other. And I think a lot of businesses don't allow what I call conflict. And conflict is great as long as it's managed, right? And um, when I wrote my first business book, it, it, one of the things, the chapters is managing through ego and conflict. And, and I always tell people, ego is swagger. Conflict is change. You don't want to suppress either one of those. You just want to manage them. And, yeah. uh, and so what I remember most about our teammates is that we all appreciate everybody's talent. And we figured out what role we had to play or what ingredient we were to help this team win. That's, that's amazing. I love, I love your quote there that 
failure isn't fatal, but being afraid to is like that's there's so much good lessons there we can all take into consideration. Craig, as we get older and we get more successful, yep. the more we play compete and not win because our ego gets in the way. We, we, we don't think we're as good as everybody else thinks we are. And we, we just don't take those risks anymore. And, and I really believe uh, when you surround yourself with people who have curious minds and that your inner circle isn't industry-based, it's just everybody. You, know, if, you can learn from everybody. And the, you know, that's what I love about what I'm able to do is I'm able to go through so many different companies and so many different businesses and learn from each one of them. That, and if you have that curious mind, you'll continue learning. It doesn't matter. I mean, right now, I, you know, when I go and, and pr- present, I'm, I'm speaking to five different generations. And so how do you stay relevant? Well, you learn from all of them, right? And, and you're, yeah, you're not afraid sure. of saying you don't know what you don't know, right? That's great. So I have to believe, you know, winning this gold medal really obviously changed your life, like forever. Like your life was changed from that day forward. Obviously, you've got on to do some amazing things. You're, you do some consulting, um, do some speaking. You know, have written a bunch of books. You know, give me some perspective on that. Like, how did your life change after winning the gold medal? Well, first of all, your life doesn't change. You're in charge of your own life, right? But what they do, the opportunities that you have, or the platforms that you're able to have from that, is. You can, you can influence, people can influence how your life will go and which way you're going to take it. So I, I really believe that the Olympics gave me an opportunity to use a number of different platforms. And, um, but I don't believe anybody changes your life. I, I think you're in charge of that because when I struggled most is when I didn't know what my goals were, right? And, and so what I think is really important as you get these opportunities, you you, you try them, some you do really well, some you fail, but you're constantly learning. And I, I truly believe that life has different chapters and that you're in charge of those chapters. And you, each one of them are a little different. Like right now, um, you know, I'm 66 years old uh, next month. I'm a grandfather of three. And this chapter of my life is awesome because it isn't about making money. It's a really about mentoring. And it's really sure. about giving back. And having this legacy and seeing other people um, do well through your influence. And, and so okay. I, I, I love the fact that the Olympics, you know, gave me a great platform. But also when, when I got injured playing with Minnesota and I had to retire, you know, you have to figure it out. It's, it's really about what you have to do with your life. And that's why it's so important to have people be part of your inner circle and that you can really lean in on them and they can help you and influence you. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that for a minute. So, you know, you learned a lot, obviously, in your time, you know, playing in the NHL and playing for Team USA around teamwork and communication. I know you've taken a lot of those really amazing lessons and you've gone out and done some consulting in the, in the business world. Like, talk to me about that. Like, how have you been able to take these lessons and apply them to the business world to help companies and help leaders like myself be even better? Well, what you do is, um, you know, I think the most important thing about leadership is time management. And so I always ask the same question, what's the most important thing in time management? And people will say, prior, you know, prior, prioritizing. And I'll say, no, you, the most important thing in time management is knowing how much time you have. Because every decision that you do and every strategy you have is based on time. And you look at Herb Brooks, the way he taught our team, the way he ran our team, that was because he had only six months to do it. If he had more time, he would have done that. And so when you look at the, um, you know, a question I will often ask, I'll say to the group, I'll say, are you a football fan? And they say, yeah. And I'll say, okay, I've got a question for you. It's a multiple choice question. <laughs> it's fourth down and 40 yards to go. Do you throw the ball? Do you run the ball? Or do you punt the ball? Or or other? Well, the answer is other because you don't know how much time is left. You don't yeah. know what the score is, right? Exactly. And, yeah. and, and if you're going to prioritize, you need to know what, if you only have five minutes, what can you do in five minutes, right? And, and so what, when I look at um, 
thinking about leadership and, and helping people, you know, we'll, we'll ask questions. They'll say, Craig, when are you going to retire? And people don't ask those type of questions, right? Who are you, who are you preparing to do your job? Right? He or she, when do you need to have them done by? Right? Yeah. And, and, and so people don't like to think about those questions. So uh, the thing that I tell people is don't confuse being busy with being productive. Yeah, for sure. And I think in our society, we, we don't take enough time to have thought and think. Sure. You know, we're, we're, just, we're just tasked to death. And I, and I think one of the biggest tasks is to be able to, you know, project the future and, and prepare for it. Yeah. So to answer your question, when is Craig going to retire? The answer is, I don't know. And the reason I don't know is because I have two kids playing travel hockey. And you know that I have to go work in order to enable them to play hockey because it's, it's, not a, it's not a cheap sport. Yeah. But you know, the best thing about it, Craig, is you have time in a society where children or kids don't give you time. And there you get to travel and you get to be with them. You get to be a role model for them. So, you know, take it for somebody who did that with both our son and daughter. You're going to miss those days like crazy. And you know what? They will too. Yeah. No, I, I'm already like dreading that day when, when it's all over. You know, we, we like living in the chaos. It's like to see them embrace a sport, which hockey is the best sport in the world, by the way. And I like to see them excel. So it's, it's great. Um, so, Jim, let's talk about this. You've been very involved in, you know, charity and philanthropic events. You know, talk to me about the work you're doing around that. And, you know, how are you seeing the role in like corporate environments, you know, playing around some of the philanthropic, um, you know, events and stuff like that? Well, you know, for 45 years, there's always been somebody that thought my name would help somebody raise some money or do something like that. But one of the things I've really realized is if you're going to help uh, a charity of any sort, it really needs to be run like a business. And they, they really have to have a, a people in there that aren't just emotionally attached to it, but are, you know, really understand it. So from my business standpoint, I think it really has to align with your, your moral compass. It really has to make sense that the, the group that you want to sponsor is something that really means something to you. And not only that, it, it isn't about just money all the time. It's really about mentoring and being part of that community. And so my end today is the Special Operation Warriors Foundation. Um, I love the fact that all these men and women have ser served our country to make everything as wonderful it is, protects us, use our kids' opportunities. And in this particular organization, these Special Op Warriors, they represent like 8% um, of the military, but they also represent about 78% of the deaths. And so... We want to make sure that these kids are educated when their father or mother die in the line of duty, or if they lose their mother while their father or mother is in duty. And so it's really special to me. It's tangible. It's in my backyard. Uh, I'm in St. Petersburg, Florida. It's located right in Tampa. And so to me, I think you want to get involved in something you can have an impact on. And, and, and that's something that helps your organization understand what that culture is that your organization has. It's just not a box checking thing. It really should be something that you really believe in and that the, it's a, it's a thread of your company and their culture. I love that. Thanks so much for giving back. What an amazing cause that yeah. you are focused around. Um, got a lot of military in my family as well. So that's, that's wonderful. Um, so talking about gold medal strategies, which is your company, Jim. You know, share a little bit about that. What did, what's your focus? What's your mission? Like, what are you trying to really zero in on from a gold medal strategies company perspective? Well, I think the most important thing is I remember when I came home from work one day and I was very successful in selling advertising. And I told my wife, I said, honey, I can't work here anymore. And she said, why? I said, because the company's preparing to compete, not win. And I just can't do that. So she asked me, well, what are you going to do? And I said, I'm, I'm going to create this company called Gold Medal Strategies. And she said, oh, you know, that, that sounds nice. I know it's got a nice little thing, but are you sure? And I, and I said, the reason I want to call the company Gold Medal Strategy is because to win a gold medal in any sport, you have to be the best male or female athlete in the world. 
or to win it as the team, you have to be the actual best team in the world. And so that was the standard that I wanted to set for us. And what we did, we started out by trying to motivate different companies. And, you know, that grew into then into creating, you know, leadership development. And then at the end of the day, all we want to do is we want to challenge everybody to be the best that they can be, to reach out. Because I know in my life, if I waited till I was ready to become who I became, it never would have happened. Somebody had to believe in me. Somebody had to push me. Somebody had to get me comfortable being uncomfortable. And so what we do is we go in and we want to make every organization that we deal with better than they were before they had us. And we want to make every individual think differently and then really be in charge and set goals for themselves. And, you know, I always tell people, you are what your goals are. And, um, you know, you, you need people to help pull out that greatness sometime or give you that courage. And, and, you know, coaches did that for me. And so, you know, at, you always tell people a motivational speaker, I can't motivate anybody. I sure. can, I can manipulate and, and I can, I can, I can put you in a position where you can decide what you want to do. I can challenge you, right? But you're the one that's going to have to motivate yourself. I, I can, I can inspire you and I can, I can head you down the right path, but you, you're going to have to make that decision yourself. Well, thank you so much for sharing all that. We got one more question for you. Um, we're right in the middle of the NHL playoffs. The most exciting time of the year. Nothing better than playoff hockey. Um, who do you got? Who are you, who are you predicting that's going to win the Stanley Cup here this year and why? Well, uh, I, I think the Bruins are very, very deep. So that, you know, this is a, this is a, a, a battle, you know, I mean, yeah. at the end, when it's in the Stanley Cup finals, uh, nobody's not hurt and the depth really becomes a big deal, right? So I, I think it will be a showdown between the uh, Avalanche and the Bruins. So it will be my two pick. Oh, man, that would be an amazing series. By the way, my son's two favorite teams, the Avs and the Bruins. And thankfully for the Avalanche, we're healthy. All of our people are back. Obviously, we're still missing Landis Dog, but beyond that, we're the healthiest we've been all year. So we'll see how it shakes out. Hopefully, it'll be a, a good battle till the very end for the Avs. But Jim, I want to thank you. Um, first off, thanks for your time. Congratulations on you know all your success. You know, winning the gold medal and you know moving on to the NHL and then you know having a very successful gold medal strategies business and thanks for sharing all these amazing insights in terms of leadership you know and teamwork and all the lessons you learned through that experience we do appreciate all that and um want to thank you for the time yeah well thank you for the opportunity you know if there was one thing i was good at in my life was taking advantage of all the personal sacrifices that people did and so for the listeners if you can change your mindset when somebody gives you an opportunity to understand that they're the one making the personal sacrifice, you know, so when your kids go to the rink and they realize that this is really a family commitment for their opportunity and that you're, you're willing to give up a lot of things, not only financially, but time and everything else. And not only you, but your wife, and if he has a brother or a sister, there's a lot of things. So I hope people can change their mindset and look at these as opportunity and be thankful and take advantage of it. There we go. Everyone listen to that. Change your mindset. I appreciate it, Jim. Thank you so much. My pleasure.